This is Madden 17 on EA Sports. Anticipation is bouncing for today's game. And we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. It's the Colts going up against the Titans. With that, let's get up to Nissan Stadium in Nashville. With the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. We welcome everyone to the Music City, just a stone's throw from the Country Music Hall of Fame. We are at Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. Today, it's a good matchup in the AFC South between the Indianapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. A first down throw for Mariota. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Smart approach there, using the run to pick up the first. And that was a defensive setup they prepared for this week, knowing that keeping it on the ground was the best way to attack it. And that means also that they're able to read them pretty well. All the things they prepared for when they get to the line of scrimmage, they see it in pre-snap recognition and know exactly how to attack based on their planning and preparation. They'll run it now out of the gun. Uses the stiff arm. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Mariota now on second down. And a loose football. What a move. There he goes right side. Touchdown, Titans. Ricardo Lewis, his first touchdown on the year. And the Titans have taken a first quarter lead. Not a bad way to start it. And I think that that was part of their script because so many teams script their opening possessions. And, and whether it's just that possession or even deeper into the half, Sometimes it's 15 to 30 plays. That had to be one in there where they call a shot play. Go for the big one, and they got it done. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Here comes Philip Dorsett now to return it. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Throw 
throwing now. Wilson on first down. And incomplete to open things up. Philip Dorsett, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And how about this wide receiving core, Charles? Well, I was at the hotel watching a little film, and you popped your head in and said, these receivers are pretty good from what I can tell. You're exactly right. Can't wait to see them do their thing out on the field. Second down following the incompletion. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. A look at the defensive starters for Tennessee. Terrell Casey doesn't get the attention that he deserves, but he is an absolutely terrific defensive tackle. The best player on just about any team he would play on. A dime look defensively here for the Titans on third. Now Wilson. And he's got his man, Hilton. 15 yards through the air and a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick. That when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And they'll run it here. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Credit the tackle there to Aaron Lynch. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now Wilson on second down. Over the middle, Dorsett. That catch good for five. It's third down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them. And they run that quick cut on the slant. And oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. Wilson now to throw on third down. And left side here, it's Graham. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. down toward the midway point in quarter one. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Any team that runs the toss and runs it successfully, that means they win the battle on the edges. That means you seal the edge in order to let your back get to the corner. They got it done there for a very nice game.
They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Quick hitter here, it's complete. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. And that was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. On second down, here's Wilson. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Give them five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Ooh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. On third down, Wilson. It's caught on the right side. Williams. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. And now the Colts call on their field goal unit here. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. And this one is right through. And they are on the board, trailing now 6-3. to three. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And this is going to be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. And now they'll try the end around. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Their dangerous wide receiver. His first touchdown on the year. And the Colts have taken the lead. And his kick is right through. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this across the 25 couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line and here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field and last time one play interceptions so this offense they should be fresh <laughs> that's a good way of putting it and I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football and don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. 
I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, what they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle, or if you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. You've got a chance to rumble. One receiver left, two to the right. They go play action here on first down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. That time they were looking for the former Auburn Tiger, Ricardo Lewis. And now it's second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Unable to connect on a first down pass play. Now it's second down. On second down, Mariota again. And that'll be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. On third down, Mariota. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. Well, he just threw an interception last drive. Nearly another pick. And things aren't very even right now, are they? It's a little bit sloppy out there, isn't it? It's kind of the difference between driving on those paved roads and those country roads that have those <laughs> potholes in them, isn't it? Because that's the way this game's going right now. A lot of bouncity bounce to it. You spent some time on some tips. Plenty of family back there. God love them. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now. And they run under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Aaron Lynch. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. now following the completed pass they come out five wide three of them to the right side from the gun on third down Wilson he's going to loft one deep left side here that's caught inside the 20 touchdown Indianapolis T.Y. Hilton his first touchdown on the year and the Colts are able to grow their lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. 
Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down, Mariota. Complete to Amaro on the right side. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. And they talked about how important the passing game was going to be against that defensive look. Good job there going to the air for the first down. It's all about preparation. It's all about planning. And then it's about execution. So they put it all together in practice. Okay, this is what we think we're going to see. This is how they get to it. And then when the game comes, read it and attack it. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. That was a good, strong run there. While it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe it's something they can build on as this game continues. Now a second down throw for Mariota. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it, Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. I don't know about you, but I like this call. Third and inches, and instead of worrying about getting it back to a running back and maybe there's some penetration from the defensive front, just go ahead and take it, move forward, and pick up the first down. And as we say often, it shows confidence in your offensive line. So it'll be first down here after the run. Mariota to throw it this time. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Throwing is Mariota. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. I heard so much about the offense Marcus Mariota ran while he was at Oregon, about how people were just wide open, how he couldn't fail to hit them. But I always said the same thing. He sure as heck didn't miss them very often. Very accurate, even on short throws. Yeah, he can go short. He can go deep, obviously. But he's really good with that short passing game. Dart thrower. Very accurate. Receivers love him. Mariota to throw it. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. It'll be a two-yard game, and it'll bring up a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Again, it's Mariota. Going to throw right side here, complete. And I think the ball's out. It's a gain of 19 down to the 19, and it's a first down. I don't know about you, but I can hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession, no turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming, just hang on to the ball, man. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Titans are able to make this a close game again. Extra point try now for Suckup. And this time he gets it to go as it is up and good. Good. 
fires the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. down with Wilson. Caught on the right side by Dorsen. And he's eventually brought down, but not before he reaches the 39, just shy of the 40. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Second down, eight. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Now Wilson on second down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. My high school coach, John Ford, used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket, and he throws into double coverage anyway. He called you laddie? He called me laddie, and that was the nicest thing he called me. A nickel set shown by the Titans on third down. They can pass. Third down, Wilson. He's going to loft one deep left side here. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Philip Dorsett, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Colts add on to their lead. And that there, that was just a fly route. There was no stop. He just went. Yeah, and it was beautiful to watch because... You have to set it up as you go along. Everyone knows he's fast, so you play him for that. That's the number one thing you want to take away. But as you go through a game, sometimes you vary the speed in which you come off the line of scrimmage and maybe start a little bit slower, get him to stop his feet a little bit as a defensive back, and then explode and go, as we saw there. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run. run. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Mariota on first down. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. They'll run it now out of the gun. And running room hard. And another timeout taken by the Colts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime.
second down, Mariota. And he floats one there, incomplete. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. An extra defensive back on the field here for third and goal. Third and goal, Mariota surveying the field. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Their dangerous wide receiver, his second touchdown on the season. And the Titans have made this a one-score game. Suck up for the extra point. down to four. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And the Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. And they're going to go soft on the corners. They'll come out in the pistol. Now Wilson on first down. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. You know the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? But you're going to tell me, good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first, it's good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you, leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen. And now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So here we go, first and ten now. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Still needing ten yards, second down. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. But when this ball's tipped and intercepted, picked off here by Aaron Colvin. That late in the clock, second quarter, why not just run it a time or two and get it into the locker room? What you're saying makes absolutely perfect sense. Run it and get out of there. But I'm just wondering if the pressure of today's NFL and the high-powered offenses that you're facing may have forced them into saying, let's try and get some more points. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. We got three, we got three, we got three. Now they try the right side here. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had the ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. Second down following the run. 
In the slot on the right is Graham. On second down, here's Wilson. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. Uh, they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side of the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. And on third and three, they decided to go with a dime package. Yeah. Six DBs. Yeah, you're right. They got six out there. Now Wilson. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. A gain of eight and a first down. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers, has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Now a handoff looking right. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. A huge play that time for the Colts. 40 yards on the ground. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting it. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Philip Dorsett with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. In order to lead in the game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out come the Titans now. They'll have it first on offense to start the third. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second? Most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Mariota now on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. Third down, Mariota. And that is, I think he caught it. He did, but they'll say out of bounds. It'll be incomplete. The third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. Oh, he takes it in, doesn't let it bounce. He takes it at the two. 62 yards on the punt that time. Wow. And the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown 
looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. And he's going to be taken down here at about the 10. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Pardon me, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. See if they stay on the ground for a second down. Now Wilson on second down. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. He's got pressure, gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Jadavian Clowney in there to drop it for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. Here's Pat McAfee now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he'll just punch it out of there, and it's not a great kick. Fielded at the 43. And he takes it all the way, but there is a flag down, so hold the celebration. This one's coming back. And a great spot to start this drive from here. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off. It's the Pro Bowl corner. Joe Hayden with it. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series. And because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was say, maybe makes that offense feel good but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe it'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Seven yards to go on second down. Play action. It's Wilson. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And look out, I think he's going to go. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Colts add on to their lead. Good pass, clean catch, and a house call there on the fly route. And not that much room to operate. So that tells you about his acceleration. We always talk about being able to go from 0 to 60 real fast. Took him less time than that to get to top speed and complete that play. Now after McAfee to kick. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Now, last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. They go back to the air here after the INT. Complete to Amaro on the right side. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism. 
Great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. That one goes for 24 yards. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Mariota on first down. And over the middle here, Amaro. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field. So it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. And now they're in the hurry up. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman. But they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Now a second down throw for Mariota. And this is caught at the eight. And down he goes, taking it inside the ten, just shy of the five at the six. And they're going to speed things up here. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field. That... Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. They come out here in the eye. From the four, it's second and goal. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. Back now in Nashville. It's Titan football here as they trail to begin the fourth quarter. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. No gain on the play that time. So a big stop, and it's gonna leave him with a fourth and goal. Field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. Desperation time. Mariota on fourth. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. It's the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. I love it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. When a coaching staff sees their team run the ball this successfully in the fourth quarter, they're really excited because you can plan for a running game all you want and want to press that advantage when you get it. But for the most part, it's a little bit of a surprise. And right now, they've got to keep that going, want to continue to grind out the game out and continue to do exactly what we just saw there, and that's run the football. 
And some room to work. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Well, I'd say that run's pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage, giving them time to throw it, run it, do whatever they wanted. That's why there are points up on the board. And right now, the psyche of the offense, we're in control, and we can do whatever we feel like doing out here on the field. And on the ground they go with a running back. A gain of three, second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Now they'll run it on the toss. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. On third down, Wilson. He's got time. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. In the red zone this time. Another pistol look here. First and goal from the one. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A great play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Colts use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred, still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? Down. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Only three there on the screen. It's second down. They completed the screen, but one of the things you worry about is can the quarterback get rid of the ball before he's actually tackled? So your offensive linemen have to hold up the rushers a little bit because you want to make sure you keep your guy's jersey clean throughout the game. Second down, Mariota. It comes, and he lost the football. Mariota had it jarred loose. Taking it right down Broadway. Past the 20. And they are going to score on the fumble return. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Second time he's lost a fumble. This one hurts more. It's return for six. He's been under a lot of duress, hasn't he? pressured, hurried, harassed the whole game. Well, the offensive line not giving him a lot of help. Not a lot of help, but the bottom line, he's got to take care of the football.
So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. Pistol. First down, Mariota. And he's got his big tight end over the middle, complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. <laughs> he had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. On first and ten, here's Mariota. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. It's a ten-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a fullback playing in that spot. You know, times have changed, right? The old-school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college. With all the spread offenses, not very many pro style, where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it but aren't necessarily that position. again. Mariota on second and ten. Eluding the pressure right. Call it a gain of three. And they're going to have a third down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. They got to get to the 23 here on third. He'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Complete to Amaro on the right side. Call it a gain of 13 yards on the play. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. Boy, that's some kind of effort. When he caught it, I doubted if he could get there. Knew it was going to be close, but credit him. Really good effort. How about the rack on that play? The run after catch? But most of the time, we think of it as just being an open field and picking up yardage. Sometimes you have to be real physical in order to gain the yardage you need for a first down. Down here in the red zone, you know you couldn't hang on. And sometimes they just have to get out of their own head because they understand how tight windows are there and how many bodies are there. And sometimes they just overthink it and don't catch the ball. On second down, Mariota again. And this is caught. Well, they get one back. Picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. But that route is really tough to cover because if they're running it correctly, you think it's really going to be a slant. Yeah, well, we talk all the time about how it's tough to execute offensively, but you're saying, don't forget, it's tough to cover for the defense, too. Yeah, the number one thing that you're taught is to not get caught inside or get beat inside. So you guard that a little bit more. So that gives you a little bit more space to operate outside if you start your move initially inside if you're a receiver. 
and he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They have the big cushion here in the final stages of this one. I don't know if there's any better feeling than being up big on the road. There really can't be because for a team to go on the road and win in the NFL, that's huge to begin with. But just think about all the preparation that went into it. When they first started talking about this game, leading up to it during the week, going on the road, unfamiliar city, obviously, unfamiliar hotel, no one's going to be with you once you get to the stadium. They're all going to be against you. You name it, all those things they had to deal with, they were able to conquer them and do it convincingly. Yeah, they did it very convincingly. And now the final moments of this one. still with three timeouts. We'll see if they want to use him here as the kneel down comes. Third and 11, five in the secondary now. Nickel look. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. So for the...